that was my official first touchdown on the foreshore in four months. I'm back, nice to see you all. Can't wait to get stuck in, so let's see what we can find. The first thing we see is a little piece of hand-painted blue and white china. And the second thing we see funnily enough, funnily enough because I'm a painter, is a paintbrush. I'm going to take that home and use it. There we are. Perfect. I'm chasing the tide out at the moment. I've come down here super early. So back wall is just there. Tide is going out. It's not going to be low tide for another two and a half, three hours, but there's still lots to work with up here. We are first tow in the Thames. It's been a while. There's a nice chunky tooth. Time was when I couldn't resist taking these home, but I've now got boxes and boxes of teeth. keeper as it's my first tooth since being back. I thought I'd just head over to the pottery zone for a while and give it a bit of my time and attention. And a bit of pipe, that's a good sign. Find lots of this down here. It's a piece of marmalade pot, Victorian, Edwardian stoneware. It's the side of the jar. How lovely. The remains, some detail, maybe floral. Well, that's a keeper for sure. Very nice. Also a keeper. There we go. Got a bit of the handle on. Really pleased with those. Nice bit of post medieval redware glazed inside. Little spur from a pipe. See the seam there. So the pipe stem would have been there bowl there. This thing here is called the spur or heel but when it's pointed like this it's a spur. A little piece of bottle with cork in. 19th century, 20th century, the cork in there still.
got this nice piece of salt glaze. Yes, it's rather nice, scratched scraffito decoration. I picked up this lovely glazed piece of perhaps sugar mould. I, sh I think that is a sugar mould fragment and that would be the inside there where it's glazed. That's a nice little collection. Milk glass. And this stuff here, asbestos, you see it all over the place on the foreshore. Just spider pipe. There it is. A little nibbled at the edges. Oh, there's a couple of initials on the heel. Nope, just one initial. Let's see if we've got any tobacco in there. Always take a little look through just in case there's something magical in there. Nothing. Now I'll leave this pipe bowl for someone else to pick up. painted blue and white porcelain. Roof tile, two peg holes. There's some more of that lovely black basalt ware. And I'll take that one home. That looks like a lid would have sat in there. Very nice stuff. Lovely piece of pottery, that's a keeper. The Thames just now really hasn't changed that much to me after four months. It may be because I missed all the green slime that was apparently covering the foreshore for the last few weeks before the clippers started running. Oh, look at that little temple. Oh, it's a house, I think. Little house. And a flower on the back. Very pretty. Yeah, so there was this uh, green algae type of stuff covering the Thames for the last few weeks. But now it's <coughs> certainly not where I am. It's, it's gone as the boats have started up again slowly, slowly. But one thing that has greeted me that I haven't had a whiff of in a while is this strange fatty smell. It's like a greasy pan smell. Or actually, if you, if you know what that kind of sheep oil smells like on their fur, another salt glaze, it's a bit like that kind of oily sebum type of smell. And that's what I'm getting right now. Sometimes the foreshore smells really gorgeous and fresh. And there's this kind of grassy, fresh smell that I would love to bottle if I could, strangely enough. But then you get this dreaded oil whiff as well. This roof tile with a lovely peg hole in it. Such tactile objects. I really struggle not to take all these home. I put them in the garden. Uh, 
make little insect hides out of them. And then we've got a piece of pearlware here. Pearlware dish. And in the same area, some glazed redware. Bit of a jug handle. Oh, no, bit of a jug lid. Some kind of condiment. Nice chunky piece of pipe. It's not a particularly low tide today, so it's not going to go down as much as it normally might. However, we can work with this. This is a nice little patch I've stumbled across. We've got some lead here, good sign. We've got a bit of typeface. Minute. Can't actually make out the letter on that or the or the punctuation. We'll keep that though and have a look at home. Lots of washers, coin size, more typeface. I've spotted some piece of worked metal, lead or pewter alloy maybe. A mount of some kind I think. That's going to come home with me, no idea. Post medieval decorative piece of lead alloy. In this patch here we've got the tiniest of tiny things. I just picked up this piece of buckle loops and things down here. I'm just looking for something that catches my eye that's kind of half submerged in this really gloopy mud. Little button shank pins are a really good sign. Now if you just think about this, they're handmade from two separate pieces of metal and the head there is one piece of straight metal that's wound around the top to make the pin head and that would have been children doing that. And they date from the 1500s to the 19th century. Just wanted to show you my little pin collection here. I've got a pin collection going on for a lady in America who teaches textiles. So I'm going to send her a selection of sizes of these handmade pins so she can use them in her classes. I've spotted down here something with a hinge on it, a buckle or maybe a book clasp, but I don't know, it's pretty heavy duty. I'll try and straighten that out a bit when I get home and see what it is. It's a hinge of some sort. It's got a nice pointed end to it. Check this out. Huge piece of salt glaze where it's a pot most likely. And look at that. Applied handle there. A lovely chunk. It's a mooring. More 
more mooring rings. It's a lovely day for it. It's half sunny, half cloudy where I am, so I can see what I'm looking for. I can also get a nice bit of sun. Wedged in there. Broken one. I've just seen a whopper of a pin. Here it is. Oh, if I can get it out. Now that is a mega pin. Guys, this is really cool. Okay, we've got another big pin, but the cool thing is this just popped up. Not sure if you can see, it's an old metal ruler. And of course, yes, it's lovely to find coins. Brilliant to find coins, I love them. Great to find buttons, I love them. But this is so cool. An old metal ruler, possibly handmade. Love it. These flat bricks that were patted into shape. Often referred to as Tudor bricks. It's missing the rest of it. I've got a nice one at home, They're pretty cool to find. Haven't seen one for a while. I'll leave that for someone else to find. Nice piece of hand painted blue and white. China. That's rather pretty. And then I was just wandering around over here and I spotted what I thought might be a cloth seal. Let's have a closer look. The cloth Indeed it is. Looks like there might be a piece folded in and under. So when I get home, get that cleaned up. We'll see if we can work some more out about it. I knew that if my luck was in, I'd get some good bits around here. So and there's a little lace shape and aglet. As I've said before, these are ties to go on the end of laces, decorative or functional laces. Aha! I believe this might be the metal item I've been looking for. Is it? Yes it is, it's a lead token. Eighteenth century lead token. Just while I was going to look for my bag to put the token away, I noticed something else. Can you see it? It's pretty obvious to me. Slap bag in the middle there. Now I haven't taken this out yet. No times on it. Teens or Tines, I'm not sure how they're pronounced, but there we are, knit comb. Four in four excursions <laughs> with a four month break, how funny. I'm quite a fan of glass slag and I do tend to take it home, this is quite a pitted piece here, and this is the debris off the top of uh, molten metals. This is a scum that gathers off on the top. And I've found a huge piece here. And I'm going to have to take it home. 
look at that it's crumbling off so I've got to be kind of careful with it and there's a lovely bit and you can see it's just where it's melted and then solidified so it's just on some rock and there's another big melty bit so I'm gonna take that back and try not to knock any more pieces off this just came off here but that is a giant piece of glass slag you can see here where it's eroding out of the foreshore so at some point the slag that's been scraped collected off the top of whatever was being melted down has been deposited here and it's hardened so under here when this is finally when this all erodes away there's going to be more chunks of that so i'll keep my eye on it all right guys well that was a great first trip back to the Warshaw. we found some fab stuff including the 18th century lead token and the cloth bag seal and hmm, the handmade ruler that was pretty cool too we've got some great pottery so next time i'm out i'm going to head to an area where it is forbidden to use the trowel so it's literally eyes only totally eyes only so we'll do that in my next adventure please subscribe if you haven't done so already and press that bell and thank you again for watching